Welcome to the Blooming League of Original Podcast. G'day and welcome to another extra special edition of Thrash and Treasure, the Torture Chamber musical comedy podcast where two clowns completely destroy the music each other loves the most. With a smile, of course. I'm Gareth and I'm joined, as usual, by the man who put both the B and the itch in bitch, my co-host Aaron. How you going, mate? I'm marginally impressed. That okay. was pretty good. It I did wrote not one. quite a laugh, not quite a chuckle, but oh. a, a smirk at yeah. least. Very good. No, I'm I'm hotter than a witch's tit dangling over a cauldron <laughs> in this fucking room. Man, shit. Oh my God, I'm you should, dripping. You should move somewhere cold like Hobart. Oh, I live in Melbourne. How, how much closer <laughs> to Antarctica do I need to get on the mainland? This is true. I'm in Perth and it was lucky to hit 30 today. So yeah, happy days. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, there's a word with your name on it. There is? Shit. That was <laughs> There was that many degrees at three o'clock in the morning. Mm, yeah, and no. I know because I was awake editing. We had that last week and um, oh, did you? we sent it over. Yeah, everything, all the heat comes from the west over to the east. So anyway, yeah. hey, guess what? I don't like guessing games. Okay. You only get, you only get <laughs> one guess. That and, didn't work. No, you only get so one bomb. guess and that was it. <laughs> We've got a guest. We do. We do. see that. Yes. And I tell you what, I've been counting down the hours to see if we can get chaos reigning with this next guest. He's wilder than the wind with a nod to the old school. Some say he's immortal, but only in dreams. He's the master of darkness who shuns fallen idols with a kill or be killed attitude all the way from the edge of the world. We are united with the host of the Self Starter Podcast and the Andy Social Podcast. And if that didn't break the ice, we may as well continue head on and touch the fire he's heavy metal's answer to kylie minogue who plays bass in the legendary aussie metal band lord and he's blessed us with his presence here in the musical torture chamber we're about to find out if he's the messiah or just a very naughty boy throw your horns up and welcome andy (laughs) dowling Jeez, God, Gareth, I can't believe that is one of the best intros intros I've ever heard. And uh, Thank you. I might have to just clip that for later. I might have to repurpose <laughs> that for something else. That might be for my audio CV. When I eventually uh, tiptoe into radio, I'm going to use that as uh, as my testimonial. That's uh, absolutely fantastic, Gareth. And I am. I'm on Guys, Aaron, thank you so much for having me on. No, that's all right. I, I can't believe you actually made you sound cool for a change. Yes. I, I kind <laughs> of <laughs> maybe want to be your friend now. Here's the, uh, there's a, We've set- got a long way to go. Look, there's and a... I can't take credit for that. Usually, no. I write the intros. No, and you can't. The can. one I wrote for yeah. you called you a diva, yeah. um, as I do all my guests. Um, but he chickened out on <laughs> I, that. No, so, I, I had um, I had something. And to be perfectly honest, look, yeah, that was better. Andy wrote, wrote half of that himself. So. Was, yeah, I was gonna say, they're they're all. Did you? Um, you don't know this, Aaron, because I didn't tell anyone. There's just I just referenced every song of the latest Lord album, Fallen Idols, in that. Oh, very good. You yeah, guess. very good. I was very I even, impressed. I even went. I even came back, and I wasn't going to do the um the covers, the bonus tracks, but I thought, no, nah, I've got to chuck them in there too. Otherwise, it's incomplete. Oh, it, was, it was the it was the first pressing, the limited edition version of the album, the 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 first yeah the first release of that of that album, and uh, you nailed every track off that album, all the bonus tracks, the covers. Well done, Gareth. You're would, you're you're a, you're a heavy metal nerd. I was I was <laughs> I was literally reading it off the back of the CD. So, <laughs> which I have in my hot little hands. So, That's a yeah. lie. You rewrote the script. I'm so impressed right now. I didn't have to hold your hand through that. I'm mm. really am gobsmacked mm. right now. Like, and we're work. and we're out of time. Good work. Thanks for coming in. Yes. That's great. Uh, <laughs> end end on a high. <laughs> end on a high. Yeah. It's, it's all downhill. It's all downhill from here. Uh, yeah. Now, why are we here? Why are we here? Well, obviously, with you hosting this week, mm. we'll, and and our guest being metal, yep. we will start off with musical theatre, mm. I guess. Let's do the music. Now, I want to know who chose this one. Well, I gave Andy two choices, mm. uh, and he chose the bigger torture. Yeah. So he chose <laughs> Pippin. Yeah. Which is a classic Stephen Schwartz musical. What happened? So continuing on with our fairy tale theme of, of last uh, week with Jane Caro, Into the Woods with Stephen Sondheim. Mm. This week we have Pippin with mm. Stephen Schwartz. So thankfully you did choose Pippin and not the other one because I would have been screwed with my little <laughs> the other one. theme there. Because next week I continue the theme. Was the other one the redneck? Redneck hillbillies. That'll yeah. be another episode. Oh, good. I look forward to that. 
Yeah, it's a good one. It's mm. a really good show. I'm not going to say what it is because I, I don't like you finding out names of musicals what because kind? then you, you will know that shows exist. Like <laughs> Assassins. We're lucky we got away with Assassins because had you found that and seen like, oh, Assassins, what's that? Mm. And clicked on it, mm. it wouldn't have had the impact that it did have for you to listen to it. It wouldn't. And it was one of the few that I liked. So so hopefully this week I tortured you both with but Pippin. I, believe me, I do not go looking for musicals. Just in my spare time, I am not looking for musicals. But believe me on that one. That's homophobic. <laughs> <laughs> what, a, what a response. Yeah. I know. It's, it's go, he's always you are gonna, on Thrash and Treasure. <laughs> always, he's always playing the gay card. And what do I get to play? The straight white man card. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's when everyone goes boo. Like, you guys are a pariah in society now. <laughs> Welcome to the podcast, Andy. You're now a pariah. Just from, just from yes. being. Anyway, Pippin, <laughs> yes. as usual, I yep. knew nothing about this musical. And I can tell you right now, I still don't know anything about this musical. Yeah. This was, it was bizarre and odd. And I just want to know in the first track, why did they leave in the band tuning up? It was like, they were all, they were sitting there tuning. It sounded like they were tuning up and then they went into a song and I thought, maybe you should edit that bit out because that was that was pretty awful. And then the next song has got the most bizarre line, lyric in it, which says, children belong in the snow. And I'm thinking, what, freezing cold, stuck in the snow, head first, kids in the snow? <laughs> I'm like, what? Did they just say that to make it rhyme? It was just, it was weird. Probably. It, it, was, it was the 70s. It was, I see, I don't even know when this, because all I'm seeing is this is 2013, which is when well, it was. Okay, yeah, we, we, we should have explained that. We did the 2013 Broadway revival. Yeah because even though Patina Miller in that playing the lead, leading player is magnificent, yes. Ben Vereen mm. made that part his okay. and was known for that part for so long. However, in 2015, when doing a production of Hair, he was uh, sexually harassing a couple of the cast members. Oh. So, does, um, does Scott Morrison know about this one as well? <laughs> Oh, I, I wouldn't be surprised, but I'm going to go out there and say, Scott Morrison, you are a cutie pie, so you can call me anytime, honey. Ew. How does it feel <laughs> to have unwanted sexual advances from someone you're not attracted uh, to? I see what you did huh? there. I see. Yeah. What, yeah. Okay. I was just thinking, because if we're going to get to blustery blowhards, war is science. That was all about it. There's just this buffy dude King Charlemagne. who's going, who's in my head, because I... I'm not watching it, so it's yeah. just it's just in my car with the windows up in case I stop at the lights and some can hear what's coming from my speakers. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, rough, we've got to send them down the hill so we can kill them all. And I'm like, oh, God. And then I'm getting that then his kid comes along and I think the kid is Pippin and he's like, geez, Dad, I can lead the armies too. Or I might have missed that completely. Well, there's um, two of them. There's, there's the brother, Louis, or oh, Louis. Okay, I wasn't paying um, attention. I think he's her half-brother, Pippin. But, um, and he's the one that goes, Kaka in that song. Right, okay. Which I love. Yep, it's an odd bit. The fourth song, Glory, lyrically, that could be a metal song. We just need to yep. change the arrangements, change the melody, put some guitars in there, put a bit of drums, a bit of bass, because that's actually a really, you know, lyrically, it's great. Every Everything else about it's horrible, but lyrically, it's a, I thought, that's a really, that could be a metal song. That's that's a good, good song. Okay, I was thinking that this was going to be about wars and generals and all this sort of thing, and then they all start hallelujahing and praising Jesus, and I got lost, completely, utterly lost. No, no, um, no, hang on, hang on, hang on. Seventh yep. century France or England and all that. Think mm. of what the royals were like and how much they went to war for their gods. All right. Well, that makes sense now. That's what that's about. Because I didn't open Wikipedia on I'm this one. I'm an idiot and I know that. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't open Wikipedia on this one because I literally, I wanted to immerse myself in it and go, what's the story, Morning Glory? Hit me with it. Um, <laughs> it was the wrong show to do It was the wrong show. <laughs> it was the wrong show. And, oh, my goodness gracious me. Like, and, yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> but the thing is, you're, you're not wrong, but you're also not right because mm. I don't think you're meant to to get it see every time i don't get something i either get told well you're not meant to or you're an idiot so <laughs> at least i'm on the side of you're not meant to at home we're not meant to connect with them right we're not meant to relate to them and go on their journey with them we're right. on the outside looking in right. we're watching this doe-eyed dick pippin who doesn't know what he wants in life okay see 
Ugh. God, fucking teenagers. And he's walking around going, oh, I can do this. Oh, I can do that. Oh, I'm going to do this. And that's very much what the okay, show's that, about. Now that makes sense because, and okay, so here's, here's, my, here's my issue with all of this. How are you supposed to connect with characters that you literally don't like? That to me, that makes After. that makes no sense at all. And if I can't connect on some level, because I'm telling you right now, there are so many layers of music that I can't connect to on this one. Um, yeah, with so many musicals that I just can't connect on. That I need something. I need like a good story, like Prom or Assassins, or you know something like that. And then I connect on that and go, you know what? Mind is open, and now I can see this for what it is, and it's very good. But if you just got a bunch of dicks and people you don't <laughs> like, I'm like, well, I don't give That's a shit. That's a with- different musical now altogether. You're being- <laughs> that was off off Broadway. That one. I didn't get it at all. I didn't actually, the finale, I was, again, there's lots of really short songs on this, which I like because I look at that and I go, okay, it's only a minute 55 on this one. There's only three minutes on that one. It'll be over soon. The finale, and I'm going, hallelujah, praise Jeebus, seven and a half minutes minutes. long. (laughs) (laughs) Just end now. Beautiful. Just end now. And then they put a load of extras in. (laughs) <laughs> oh, they no, they just put some karaoke tracks. On I the no, they called a sing along, and I I can't oh, sing along to that karaoke for crying out loud. This okay. a selfie is just taking a fucking portrait of yourself. The same <laughs> shit, different smell. <laughs> karaoke versions i've never well, i have done a fair bit of karaoke in my time i have never seen anyone do karaoke show tunes or maybe, um maybe well you are me. going to the wrong parties <laughs> yeah i've been going to all the straight parties so anyway oh there you go <laughs> that's below the belt just like our gay parties <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we talked about this with Alison, with you, about <laughs> um, Marvin being a dick. Oh, yeah. And not being able to connect with him. Yeah. And and she even said it to you then. Do you have to? Well, yeah. Do you have to like connect said, with do... someone to be I... able to watch their story? I think so. Do you know? And some... I think that's a problem in it's... society today that people only want things they can connect with. <sighs> no, that's the antithesis of this podcast. <laughs> Here's the thing. Well, I'm, I'm listening to music yeah. I genuinely, you know, don't connect with. I don't like a lot of it. I'm very proud. It was yeah. like the, the podcast, The Spring Awakening, and it was kind of pop punky, <laughs> you know, to me i need to i need to find that connection and i think a lot of the time is so often in these shows and i don't know if it's deliberate or it just makes a good story the male characters are either douchebags or or just pathetic and it kind of makes me embarrassed as a man to have to sit there and watch another man just be a complete failure so anyway that's that's me that's weird because women seem to love seeing other women fail (laughs) yeah (laughs) <laughs> um, look, um, it's it's one out of five, and the whole, every time I listen to this, and I listen, probably listen to it three, four times because I was driving a lot, and I just thought, what have we done to Andy? I would like to know what Andy thought, actually. And I, I, I'd like to know. I'm just wondering up front, Andy, what because I don't know this answer to this question at all. What exposure do you have? Have you had to musical theatre in your personal and or pre- professional career? Yeah, uh, little to none. Mm. So really, for me, whenever anybody talks about musicals, I've seen. I haven't. I don't think I've actually been to a live performance. Um, so I've only ever seen sort of movies that have been adapted into like mm. sort of a musical sort of format. But um, I just, I just uh, remember drama school as a kid in high school mm. and very sort of uh, extrovert personalities and it was just a little bit too much for me and so I've never honestly I've never liked musicals whatsoever mm. you know, um, they've always been a, a real cringe for me I I, I I feel awkward watching or listening to it it's uh, it's like an over dramatized uh, story but but the funny thing about this experience being this podcast that I'm being a part <laughs> of and Aaron throwing me down the gauntlet of Pippin I've just realized how many like how many contradictions I have in my own life because I can shit on musicals all day long, but really the theatrics and the dramatization, all that is yep. just scattered completely through heavy metal. Exactly. And, yep. and Amen. It, and <laughs> thank Lord. And it took me a bit. And um, when you guys want me to jump out of the gates with with my little review for this, uh, do it for, now for this. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I'm, I'll, yeah. I'm diving in. Go. Oh, did you prepare a review? Oh, I need my popcorn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, hang on. I haven't I haven't written out an eloquent. Uh, mm. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> nothing. Nothing like it. I can't match you, Aaron. So. Neither do I. No. That's no, not no, mine. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> well. 
when you gave me this, I immediately, immediately laughed because I've been walking, apart, walking past Star City Casino for the past however many months with Pippin the musical advertised all oh. over the billboards and everything. And I just walked past going, what the hell's that? And <sighs> not knowing anything about it. And the only thing I thought of was I'm a big basketball fan from back in the day. Scotty and Pippen. I was just thinking, Scotty, Scotty Pippen. Pippen. But, I like, but I thought they, they spelled his name wrong. So whatever that, whatever that's about. <laughs> so, so anyway, you send me through the link. I go, all right, let's, let's, let's give this a go. So, you know, it starts off and immediately, and I sent you a message, Aaron, I just went, there's a, there's a doodly do right at the beginning of this a lyric <laughs> doodly do. And I thought, fucking help me now. Like I, I, I this is going to be a long, <laughs> long journey ahead and there's going to be twists and turns, ups and downs. And uh, I just don't know whether I'm going to come out of this better as a person or worse for it. So overall, I've, I've there's, look, initially there's a couple of criticisms straight off the bat. You had helped me, Aaron, by giving me a little bit of context around the story. And so I did a little bit of digging to try and understand what the story was because my attention span listening to music, uh, it takes a, a fair few goes to listen to a song listen to the lyrics and sort of understand conceptually what's going on. And then over time, as you listen to an album or music, you tend to enjoy it more because you, you start to dig through the layers. Yep. And so for me, reading up first, it gave me a little bit more appreciation of what potentially the story could have been. Because you told me that the, that the uh, musical was loosely based and loosely is a very good word to describe and probably an understatement. Loosely. Looser loose. than me on a Saturday night. Hey. <laughs> well, I haven't experienced that yet, Aaron, So, uh, but uh, I'll take your word for it. <laughs> so Pe- Pepin board- the Hunchback <laughs> is, is, the, is the character that this is loosely bu- uh, based off. And so this guy is from whatever, uh, whatever you tried to describe earlier, Aaron, the 700s or the 800s or whatever it was. And he was so prince and he had a humped back uh, from birth and he tried to um, sort of bump out his dad um, to get a bit, it was a bit of a power play and then he was sentenced off to some sort of monastery and exiled away from the kingdom and then there's a whole story and there's a bunch of detail that I just lost interest in straight away. (laughs) But... It's like looking in a mirror. <laughs> <laughs> but then I thought, okay, well, when I listen to this soundtrack, I'll be able to learn more about the story because uh, on the surface, it sounds kind of interesting. And then when I started listening to it, I thought, none of this musical is anything about Bloody Hunchback. <laughs> I know, right? And so I'm, I'm listening to it. And I'm going, I don't even know what the hell's going on. I mean, the story <laughs> is from the 700s. This is, a, this is a real life, apparently a real life person who was a, around in 760 something. And I'm listening to something that sounds like straight out of, you know, New York City and and some sort of 70s, you know, rock vibes that are going on at, and places in this swing sort of music. And I just, I was trying to connect the dots. And as I was listening to the story, I'm just going, I, I think I've got my, my, my wires crossed. I can't believe it. And so I went to Wikipedia to actually look up the musical. And it says that the character, the protagonist, Pippin, doesn't even have a hunchback in, in the musical. <laughs> and so I'm like, well, hang on. We've lost like the most important part of Pippin himself. <laughs> like his most redeeming feature is the hunchback. Back. And, it's, and, and it's like the, the you know the writers of Pippin have just gone nah fuck that let's get rid of that because nobody likes a hunchback we like we like pretty people so we're gonna have pretty people in our story and so off we went I think the really cool thing about this and I've, and these are the these are the surprising moments of of this uh, soundtrack or this album that I've, I've listened to is that there was actually some half decent songs on here like there's a couple of songs where and I had to really hold myself back because my knee jerk reaction was just to shit on this completely straight away. <laughs> out of the gate and just hate on every aspect of this like it was just it was nothing that I would ever go out of my way to listen to whatsoever but when I forced myself to just calm down and just start to listen to it and listen to it for what it was I started to find little things in there that I could relate to and so I'll tell you straight away my my favorite song that actually grabbed me first time around because I listened to this a couple of times which surprised me was No Time At All and I have no idea why maybe it was a really catchy catchy chorus i don't know what it was but the hook grabbed me and i was i was going on my my morning walk around the area here in sydney and i just i thought oh oh this is actually this is actually sticking into my head it's a bit of an earworm it's a soundtrack for the time that you the moment that you were in there you go so it was it so i was actually quite surprised with that and that would be a song not that i would regularly go back to but if i heard it in my travels in the years to come i would actually probably relatively enjoy it so it was so that's that was a high point 
Um, the other songs on there, there was a number of songs like Corner of the Sky and Simple Joys in particular, where Corner of the Sky, and Gareth, you might be surprised with this, but I heard elements of Toto, 70s Toto and Jethro Tull. Dude, I'm, yeah, I'm with you. And I went, okay. And as soon as that clicked, then I started to listen to, listen to it from that angle. And then I started to appreciate it. And then Simple Joys, I heard, <laughs> I'm really going on a stretch here. I heard, I heard Jethro Tull. I heard, um, what's her name? Lorena McKinnett. M- I heard a bit of her and Spock's Beard, which is a progressive rock band from from the US uh, from the 90s and the 2000s. Oh, yeah, them. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. I don't know them. No, <laughs> not at all. No I, fucking clue. I thought I might have dragged you off the off the edge there, Aaron, yeah. with that one. But um, no. But, but I was uh, once uh, once I listened to these songs, I actually went, you know what? There's actually some some links here into 70s rock. There's some sev- like really polished yeah. AOR 70s rock. Yeah. And I could start to identify that identify with it and appreciate it. And so I tell you what, like I wouldn't, I wouldn't go back to this album on occasion, like, and, and indulge in it. Um, especially the storyline. I just, I just, I just lost interest in it straight away. As soon as the hunch, the hunchback was gone, I was like, no, I'm, I'm, <laughs> out, That's it, I'm, I'm out. out. Yeah. But I tell you what, and you shat on this before Gareth, but I, I tell you what, one of the redeeming aspects of this album was the bonus tracks, the sil- sing-along <laughs> tracks where there was actually no vocals. I didn't get distracted by the silly story. Oh, good point. And, and you could hear enjoyed... the music. Oh yeah. yeah. And I loved it. And, and I tell you what, like, and I'm sure this is a common theme across and I was listening to one of your episodes a couple of uh, a couple of episodes ago I think mm. um, and it was a lady from Canada who was um, oh Steffi. Steffi Steffi yeah Steffi D and and I really enjoyed mm-hmm. that episode really enjoyed listening to her uh, talk about sort of what she does and just the amount of dedication into her craft and mm. so listening to that and then in context of listening to Pippin you realize that the musicianship the performance the skill set is just like out of this world. It is mm. absolutely incredible. Mm. And I the more that I sort of realized that, the more I started to appreciate it for what it was. So long story short, mm. probably wouldn't listen to it again. But if it popped up in my now that's in my algorithm, you <laughs> messed up my algorithm on Spotify now, Aaron. So thanks for that. So I'm gonna get yeah, that... Broadway mu- musicals now. Yeah. But if it does pop up in, in shuffle or you know the daily mix or whatever, then you know what? I won't skip it. I'll 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 give the songs a Give me, the songs another go. Let me, let me go. The corner of the sky. There's a really good Jackson Five version of that. Wow. Okay. Really, I could, I can imagine that. that. It's a really good version. That's the only version I'll listen to on my playlists. Is the Jackson Five one. Not that I don't like the Broadway versions, but that one. It, it's funny though. Uh, for the listeners at home, um, Andy was talking before about the doodly doos, and he he messaged me. He messaged me, and I and he said something like, "I just got my first doodly do." <laughs> And of course, I fondly remembered my first. Oh, all right. But I, I gagged with laughter, which was funny because it's been a long time since I gagged on anybody's doodly do. I tell you that. There it so. is. I'm, I'm... <laughs> I'm glad I set up that joke for you, Aaron. There Thank you. I've been sitting that on that for two weeks. Oh, good. <laughs> sitting on it, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> that is good. That is good. I actually written down five times just to make sure I didn't forget it. <laughs> I actually do. I do agree with what a lot of you said, Andy. And I didn't write down a lot of what I thought. I realised because I'm I usually listening when I'm That's driving right. and I can't write and drive. But I, I copped a little bit of air supply in this in a couple of songs. Yeah. And I totally got the yacht rock without the vocals. There's a real yacht rock kind of feel to some of these songs. And yeah, it could be it could be Toto or. Yeah, I, I I did get that. Yeah. yeah. I'm not a big Jethro Tull fan, so I kinda left that one alone. But um Yeah. No, I I, I get I get where you're going from. Yeah, absolutely. The, the music is really, really good in this. It's funny because um I've seen one production of it that had only children in it, which was my former acting class doing it. And um it so it was okay, it was all children. That's all I need to say. Um, this is the type of show that does need to be done with adults. The the current production that was just in Sydney that caused a bit of a splash with the casting with Kerry Ann Kennelly. Uh. No one wanted her in it, and no one wanted the American lady Gabrielle McClinton to be brought over here because we've got a lot of um, we've we've got a lot of of, of actresses of colour here that could have taken the part, mm. right? However, it's up to the producers, right? And shows that will will tour over here a lot of times the training grounds or sort of testing ground for international performers to then get bigger lead roles in America right because the producers have seen them they've tested their waters but not on Broadway mm. okay uh, anyways that that production was all sort of circusy 
Uh, I had a point of bringing it up. Oh, yeah, okay. So the funny thing was I've never really liked Pippin. <laughs> no, no, no. You I, did have that. You, I have a point. You... The, the opening song I've always really liked, Magic To Do, because we, we did that in my acting class in one of our reviews. Okay. And Simple Joys, I love that song just lyrically, right? Um, right. And I'll tell you what, but doing this podcast and mm. listening to it maybe 15 times, it's grown on me. Okay. It really has. But I'll tell you what, uh, I guess I'll miss that man can fuck off. Love song. <laughs> can fuck off <laughs> the first part of the orgy where he comes out and he i don't even know what he sings because that can fuck off but the orgy part can stay where they're all like do do and it's all like the start of austin powers <laughs> that's the orgy oh, but, um, okay yeah i didn't the, know there the, was an orgy in see the leading oh, player is kind of like a a faustian character it's kind of like devil on the shoulder and sort of uh, both devil and okay rather than a, rather than a hunch on the back yeah rather than a hunch back they actually address that at the start of the the show they there's a bit of dialogue and oh. the leading player says um you might have heard pippin was a hunchback well that's not true you might have heard he was this thing that's not true either or whatever the dialogue is mm. so they do address the the facts and say we're going to go on our own little story here and it does become this sort of weird thing of this dopey guy walking around sort of trying these different experiences in life which i i'd never really appreciated oh, up until go. now Look at that. From from listening to it so often, um, the music is really fucking good. Uh, the lyrics are really good as well. The, um, like steel yeah. is cold as actually, moonlight. I actually like that. I don't know what song that is, but Glo- there's oh, yeah, glory. That's glory. Yeah. That's actually yeah. Um, that's it's a weird. Good, it's yeah. a it's a good like. That's the one that I said that could be a metal song. I'm sitting there thinking <laughs> Man of War in my head. I'm going into just you're a, <laughs> you're just a, a double kick away from into Glory Ride. This steel mm-hmm. through you. Yeah, that was that's what I said. It could be a metal song. Yeah, I'm oh, over yeah, it. very much. I'm, yeah, I'm, gonna I go, I'm actually going to write those lyrics and give them to a friend of mine called Stu yeah. McGill and go, dude, you need to record this song. <laughs> <laughs> the new Silent Night album. <laughs> no, but the the ballads uh, in this. I fucking hate them. Morning glory, uh, mor- not morning glory. That was this morning. Morning glow. <laughs> morning glow. That, See, I um, had a morning glory joke and I wrote it and then I left it out. So uh, but oh, you can have wuss. it. Oh, you didn't, didn't want to seem gay in front of your friend. No. Goodness gracious me. Um, anyways, morning glow I kind of like because I do like that build up that it has and that ends off um, uh, act one mm. and sort of fades off all surreal. Now the the tune up at the start of it. Yeah. I think. I think it's meant to me. be like that psychedelic, like you're going into that world. I think that's what it might be, or that's at least what I get from it, is sort of that degradation from reality into oh. this surreal world. They should have just got the cast to do the Wayne's World thing. Well, that's what yeah. I was just doing. I had yeah. to be careful from to Wayne's World. the mic again. Yeah, do the Wayne's World thing. is much better. Doodaloo, doodaloo, doodaloo. So yeah, you man, didn't, this, this is doodaloo. another one, Aaron, that you didn't like and you and you gave to me or gave to us, even though you didn't like it. Yeah, I thought, mm. well, he's bringing his friend on this time, so I'm going to completely fuck them both up. And... <laughs> <laughs> you do that to me every week, though. But, uh, uh, pew, 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 pew. Epi- Finger guns, man. This is, this is war. It, it's war. I tell you, all week I have been walking around my house in the middle of the night, just going steel like that to no one, just steel. That's very Nothing metal. Else. That's very none metal. Of, none of the the rest of the the lyrics just going <laughs> steel every now and then. I'll sort of march on the spot. So God forbid my neighbour's been peeking over the fence again. Yeah, <laughs> need to go full cosplay and then start shouting shouting out the lyrics. Well, I kind of was because I was in my jocks. That's very spun. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sure Men of War did that as well. Uh, they totally yeah. did. <laughs> I don't know who that is, but I'm saying yes as if I know. Uh, I was going to say we'll get you. We'll get your photo later on. If you if you wanted if you wanted to see homoeroticism, you should have seen the posters on my wall as a as a 17, 18 year old. <laughs> There were so many cod pieces and not much else, I could tell you. Oh, really? Yeah. And I see, I, I, I wanted everyone to think I was straight, so I had things like the Spice Girls and Madonna. Uh. <laughs> no, no one would have known. No, because I was yeah. lusting after the women's. Uh. So, you know. Well, I had Lita Ford, so I had that, had that covered. Anyways, how did we get onto this? I, I, anyway. I still don't know <laughs> if it was a success or not, or if it was a middle of the road, uh. or uh, Andy seemed to like it more than Gareth. which Aaron, which Andy good. liked it more than me, but he's just being polite because he's a guest. No, I don't think he is. I think it's, he's just a musician. And mm, so he can't. Can actually hear. knows what he's talking about. Yeah. 
<laughs> it's it's not just me being diplomatic. I, I mean, there is an element of that yeah. always, but you know, I like to be polite. But fuck uh, that. We're on this show now. <laughs> Shit. I should know what I'm walking into by now. Yeah. But uh, as I said, like I've never liked musicals. I would never go out of my way to go go to one. Even if I got free tickets, I would still be umming and ahhing about whether there's something better to do that mm. night. Mm-hmm. But listening to this and then sort of having that sort of light bulb moment about you know being able to find some links to other types of music that I enjoy. Don't know, don't know if I'm converted, yeah. but I'm certainly more open minded to it, and I think that's probably a big win in there itself. So there you go. That. that is. I'm, mm. That's that's more than I've gotten out of. Fucking Gareth, fifteen episode. <laughs> Shit. Well, he he's going to be a bit harder because he's going to be, you know, he's going to come back each and every week and, oh, and give you hell. It. So for me, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just coming in. I'm going to be pleasant, and then I'll, yeah. I'll dart off into the sunset. No, and I've. I like I said, I found ones that I genuinely like. So you know, anyway. Yeah, exactly. And and you, we we take them all like with every metal album, unless yeah. you're giving me something that I already know. I know. You know so much about it. Everything's a blank slate. I've been so, I've been surprised a couple of times, yeah, including sure. last week. So yeah. I, I, look, I don't fucking remember what last week was. <laughs> Anyway, um, so I think we should round it up. We should round on it up. The musical theatre. There's one last thing. What I'll say mm. is a show like Pippin, um, especially like Corner of the Sky becoming a hit. I think even Love Song. Why do I hear Love Song and always think, did Linda Ronstadt do a cover of this? Or is it just that Linda Ronstadt sang a bunch of fucking love songs? I still can't work it out whether or not she's saying that. But okay. you'll notice like from doing this podcast, Gareth, mm. things on The Simpsons, you'll get a lot more references now because we're going through these things that have popped up over the years, but you, no one's known them because they were musical theatre references. So there'll be things in, in co- like society, in, in pop culture, that you'll hear and you'll be like, hey, that's from that musical. Okay. However, having said that out loud, I just realised you don't fucking care. You're not retaining any of this information. <laughs> You're not remembering anything. So that was just completely pointless. Anyway. I retain nothing. And also, I think I can quote the Simps. I think I've got about five Simpsons quotes and I've had the same quotes and I don't actually watch the Simpsons. So is it still on? Yeah. Okay. Anyways. <laughs> on that note, we should probably... We should probably throw to a commercial break. We should. Hear from our friends and sponsors. Coming this summer, winter, spring or fall, the first ever musical theater sitcom where you go behind the scenes of the latest West End show, The Fosse Forest Ballet. Where's the important stuff? Aha! A thousand pound a week ensemble rate. Ah, that's what Mamma Mia likes. Starring Philip Joel and a West End cast featuring Carrie Alice, Darren Denny, Louise Demon, and Oliver Savile, and more. It all started in 1987 when I was a jobbing actress working in a diner. Yeah, it's just I, I had a really bad experience when I was touring Australia with a wombat. <gasps> Darling! Mwah, mwah. La, la. How long have I been mentoring you? Three months? Two years. So, her name is Henrietta. The horse. Yes. I've managed to secure you an audition for the biggest, most innovative, and the latest show to be going into the West End. Joseph and his Technicolor Dreamcoat. Think more along the lines of Pant. Frozen. You can watch this episode for the price of a coffee. Simply go to www.thefussyforestbelly.com. Any and all profits go back to theatre charities, acting for others, and the theatre's trust. You'll laugh, you'll cry, and you'll see a grown man in sparkly tights. Tight nights. Nice. Tights. I guess... But I have it all together. Are I know you? exactly what's going on and where we're up to and what, what's <laughs> do. what's doing. All right. So I, I don't need no fancy okay. apps. All right. I, we're gonna. I've got my brain. We're gonna as die. As, all, as long as it'll last. All right. We're gonna do. I'm gonna yeah, do. Right, get on with it. All right. Yeah. Well, I, I really want to kick off. I know. Um, I can hear it in yes. your voice. Yeah. You're doing that thing again where you're, you're trying to move on the conversation, mm. but no one will let you. No. But we'll. We just, yeah. <laughs> I wish, I wish there was a mute button. And we're hey, back. Gareth, I've got a question. No, sorry. Go yeah. On. No, no, get started. Go. On. I was just interrupting. No, do it. Do it. <laughs> no, no. no I do was the... just... No, I'm do serious. The... I'm joking. I'm like, go. Oh, you get were being again. funny. Hurry up. Oh, yeah, I was trying to be funny. Okay. <laughs> and it was funny. And we're back. 
back in the musical torture chamber with Aaron and our very special guest from the metal band Lord, Mr. Andy Dowling. Hello, hello. Chief bass player and only bass player because there's only one bass. That I know of anyway. That you know of, yeah. Only one bass. Would that be called an ace of bass? Oh. Oh, that she wants. Uh, just uh, another baby. Just wants another baby. <laughs> oh, oh, all that she wants. Oh, just another brilliant. baby. Usually people go for the sign. That's why I was saying that. Or get stuck in everyone's head. But all that she wants is another baby. We are not here for the ace of bass, though. We're here for something else entirely. <laughs> And I was a little bit excited when I saw this album pop up and even more excited than I knew that Aaron was going to listen to it and that I got to listen to it again because I haven't heard it for a little while. So, um, Aaron, please tell us, what did Andy give you this week? Syphilis. <laughs> we haven't oh, you mean yet, what, what album did he give yes. you? Yes. Oh, okay, sorry. All right. We um, well, he gave me an album called Abigail mm. by a band called King Diamond, which is named after a man named King Diamond, well, which is not actually his name. <laughs> no. <laughs> Showbiz, who knew, huh? So, would you like to hear my review? I have literally been dying to hear this review. Please. <laughs> I have written the single dumbest joke I have written ever in my life, and I cannot <laughs> wait to deliver it. I don't know, it's a pretty low bar. Well, hmm. it came from you, didn't it? Huzzah. Anyways, no, I'm, I'm kidding. It also came from Andy, so <laughs> the bar is even lower. This, this one came from Andy. This is, wasn't even on my radar. This is all Andy, this one. So. I've done it the last one. Okay, okay. Anyways, shut up me. Mm. When I first saw the cover, mm. I said, Ah, this isn't a Lord album. Those chicken shits. <laughs> <laughs> Although, I guess that means it'll probably be good. <laughs> so, Ooh. I pressed play on track one. Funeral reissue. Bless you. <laughs> And found that I really connected with the message of this song Because I too hate it when I'm at a funeral And someone sneezes on the back of my neck (laughs) I'm kidding But this track did sound more like a funeral For a terrible Doctor Who villain Which really narrows it down to all of them (laughs) And then arrived Arrival Which really should have been the name of the first track But once the vocals kicked in I realised that I was listening to an album By none other than Almo and the Count. (laughs) Except, this track didn't quite tickle my Almo, so I entered a mansion in darkness and found the interior matched the one before, which left me rather anxious for how much of this album sounds like someone ran over Lisa Simpson with a lawnmower. (laughs) But, being the cockeyed optimist which I am, which is French for glutton, I decided to approach the family ghost with caution. No. And alas, am I eternally possessed by all this devil music? Or did (laughs) this song sound exactly the same again? (laughs) I'm on the edge of tomorrow Mm. and my seat, awaiting the 7th day of July, 1777, to see if on this 7th day the sound will rest and a new rhythm <laughs> will dawn over my speakers. And lo and behold, a sedated acoustic guitar led to none other than the same fucking sound. <laughs> <laughs> Am I on repeat? Did they do this deliberately? At least I gave them something with an orgy. All I'm getting here is <laughs> fucked in the ears by the Fran Drescher version of Axel Rose. Oh! <laughs> oh, and it. sadly, Omens was just as gloomy and repetitive. <laughs> you heard that, anger, did you? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> the anger is real. And whilst I was soon to learn that this is a concept album about mm. someone throwing Betty Davis into a wood chipper, <laughs> I feel that the repetitive nature of the music and vocals would be better served telling a story like Groundhog Day or, better yet, the Helen Keller story because at least then we wouldn't have to see or hear it. (laughs) And by the time the possession took over, I felt fatigued. But that may have been the brick I was smashing into my own head voluntarily. But not all was lost. There is one positive, I'm sure, although I'm yet to find it, but Abigail is not it. And I mean Abigail the song, not the album, nor the legendary Aussie actress named Abigail. It left me feeling winded. 
Thankfully, the black horseman steadily trotted in and calmed my hooves for exactly two minutes and 25 seconds before the same fucking sound reared back on its hind <laughs> fucking legs and kicked me in the fucking face again. Which, whilst being slightly slower than the others, was a marathon to get through at 16 minutes long. Or so <laughs> But with a name like Black Horseman, Equestrian remains. Oh, oh. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> that was my dumbest joke there ever. There it was. I'm so proud. <laughs> Funny, I picked it. Why did it take eight or nine songs to find a new sound? But alas, as the most slash only palatable song on the album mm. comes to a close, a bright light shines on Shrine as I realize the album is nearly over. Thank Sondheim for that. Mm. But damn, this is no shrine. It's the same fucking shite as the first eight songs. <laughs> Overall, this album tasted like a cocktail. Take one banana, half a bottle of vodka, a dash of crystal meth, and throw it all in a blender with Curious George and mix until the shrieking stops. <laughs> but I have to wonder, for a band named King Diamond, mm. why do they sound more like Screaming Queens? Oh. Half a star. Whoa! Oh, shit. oh yes! That, the... that, that was the same. Did you do that deliberately? Oh, I can't even get out of this is... tangleness I'm in. I knew. I just knew that was gonna what you were gonna that say. That was the same fucking song, and I didn't even realize that the first two times I listened to it, I must have switched off automatically the first two times. But then I, I sort of thought I'd a better mm. properly listen to it and and you know do my review because time's ticking on. This was a week and a half ago, mind mm. you. And I, I what the fuck was that? I do. I, <laughs> if I if I go back in my messengers, I think when Andy sent me three albums to choose, I'm pretty sure I said Abigail. It'll hurt more. So um... <laughs> yes, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> it'll hurt me yeah. for a few minutes now. It's um... but we have plenty of episodes to go. Oh yeah, I know. plenty of musicals out there. I don't think I could top, and and it is a it is a a, a concept album, and it's probably one of I'm just going to go out there. This is one of the great concept albums, and it absolutely polarizing when this was released. You either loved it or you hated it. Um, I loved it. So, um, what would what did you did you were you a lover or a hater on this one, Andy? Oh, it is one of my all time favorite heavy yep. metal albums. Yes, but the, I tell you what, Aaron, this is the reason why I threw it into the mix as a, as a suggestion, and hopefully the one that Gareth picked to pass on to you because I knew that musically and especially King Diamond's voice, you would just not like at <laughs> all. No way. <laughs> but. But what I said, but what I said earlier about the sort of the parallels between musicals and and the reasons why I hated them, but the real, mm. realizing that I'm a I'm a hypocrite, mm. is that this is as as said before, it's a concept album, and it is so it is so yep. theatrical, it is so over the top, it mm. is so ridiculous at times, and the story behind it <laughs> is so ridiculous. fucking dumb. <laughs> I but read the awesome. story and I forgot the story. All I remember is Jonathan oh. and the music. Like mm. that's all I can remember. Well, let me let me do like a quick sort of two minute version of what a like crash course of what the story was. So oh goody. So you got <laughs> Miriam and you got Miriam and Jonathan, and it's a couple, and they move into this old mansion. And so then they're hanging out there, and so they must have thought they got a great deal with this place. And then Jonathan one night bumps into this uh, Count Delafay, who is the family ghost. And so the Count goes and tells Jonathan that there's a stillborn called Abigail, and it's in a sarcophagus in the house. And Jonathan needs to go and kill his wife, Miriam. Because Miriam is possessed and is carrying the spirit of Abigail. And so then it rewinds back to 1777 or whatever it was. And the Count and his wife at the time were together and he discovered that his wife was unfaithful. So he pushed her down the stairs and killed his wife and she was pregnant with Abigail. And so Abigail was stillborn. So he cremated his wife and he decided that he wanted to keep Abigail, chuck into the sarcophagus and leave her in the house. So then fast forward, Jonathan and Miriam are uh, you know, living in the mansion. They're sitting down for dinner and they find that the table set for three people instead of two. And it's unusual and all these apparitions are happening. And so it gets crazier and crazier. And Miriam eventually says to Jonathan, you need to push me down the stairs to stop this from happening. 
anything because I am possessed with with Abigail and this needs to stop. And so he hesitates and thinks, well, I shouldn't do that. I don't want to kill my wife. And straight away, he loses his opportunity and Miriam pushes Jonathan down the stairs. He dies. She gives birth to Abigail. She dies as a a result of giving birth to Abigail. And then Abigail decides to eat the sarcophagus of her own old body. While that's all happening, the seven horsemen rock up, discover Abigail eating her old body and decide we need to stop this and put seven spikes through Abigail to kill her to stop the cycle from continuing. And then that's basically where the story ends and it's kind of like a to be continued. So the most ridiculous fucking story out there, like it is so dumb, <laughs> but I tell you what, what a great heavy metal album. Uh, oh, the, no. It yes. is so good. That, that sounds like every Japanese horror movie I have ever <laughs> seen, for starters. But um, is, yeah. I, I thought it sounded more like Elmo, not Snuffleupagus. <laughs> Definitely an acquired taste. Oh, uh, yeah. King Diamond is an acquired taste. I, I, I renamed it, though. Um Oh, I, I I got a few versions of the name. The Exorcism of Fran Drescher. Mm. <laughs> I did get that one. <laughs> Almo's Adventures in Woodchipper Land. <laughs> Bluey Blew Up. Oh, for real and life? My favorite. Wilhelm Scream, Wilhelm. the album. <laughs> okay. Wilhelm Scream. You yeah. know what that is? Yeah. In like every movie when someone gets thrown off a building or falls oh, off a cliff, uh... you hear that. that ah! That, yeah, that I can't even do it, and my my throat just caught up in itself. I, I sound like an idiot. You'll know the scream when you hear it. Yeah. It's in everything. Yeah. That's called a Wilhelm scream. Well, that joke died. Yeah. I laughed. I laughed. I'm, do you know what? Do you know what? I'm glad it would have died if it was just me here, and it died with someone else here as well. So I know it's. I know it's not me. No, he laughed. <laughs> well, I was being diplomatic. I didn't actually. Uh, I was. I was but waiting you still for. Laughed. So you I didn't did. want I me did to look say bad. Take... No, of course. No, I was. I was definitely yeah. thinking of you, Aaron. Thank you. <laughs> At least someone does. <laughs> this, yeah. <laughs> that is, this, that guy, the first time I heard that, it, it absolutely blew my mind the first time I heard this album, which was probably 1987 because this is when I discovered King yep. Diamond and then went back and discovered Merciful Fate before that. So I did it kind of backwards, but that's that's kind of the way it happens. That's so funny that the first time you heard it, it blew your mind because yeah. the first time I heard it, I blew out my brains. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love. I just miss. I just skip over those. I'm pretty sure I I bought this on cassette based on the album cover alone. It was like that's King Diamond. Look at it. It's in the metal section. This has got to be metal. I didn't really know who it was. Chucked it on my tape player and went. Yep. How good is this? This guy's going to be the biggest band in the world, and he wasn't, which still disappoints me to this day. <laughs> they were definitely not commercial friendly. That's for no, sure. And no. And Aaron, I think one thing, I mean, I don't expect you to ever, ever go back and listen to this album, but one of the, <laughs> but one, but just like, just like Pippin, one of the cool things about this album is actually the musicianship. Yep. One of the best guitarists in heavy metal, Andy LaRock, and mm. Mickey D on drums, who also played in Motorhead yeah. um, and now plays in Scorpions, yeah, Scorpions. Yep. is like an incredible drummer. And there's so many little intricate things that are going on behind the scenes, um, whether it be the guitar riffs or some of the drum work that's happening in the background. So for for a metal fan um, and for people that I know who start to get into metal, this is one of the albums that I don't give them straight away because <laughs> I'm just going to scare them off. Yeah. Turn them off. Uh, yeah. This is probably year five or six yeah. on your uh, journey of, of heavy metal. But when it, when we get to that, I really tell people, I say, you gotta you got to listen to those guitar riffs in particular because this is where a lot of the big metal bands mm. into the 90s mm. really got a lot of their influence from. Yeah. Just in incredible musicianship on this album. So, But unfortunately, old, uh, old Kim, King mm. Diamond, you know, his vocals are an acquired taste and I think that probably um, held them back a little bit, which yep. is a shame because, uh, yeah, an incredible band. Yeah. I, the funny thing, I didn't see it in the music. I'm sorry. Not this time. No. I, I will always point it out when mm. when I the music, I can see the talent. This time, I, I was so incredibly beaten over the head by the same <laughs> fucking sound in every song oh. that I, I it was lost on me. It really, really was. Yeah. And yeah. then it became a Stockholm Syndrome situation for about <laughs> two minutes. And then I just started laughing manically. Well, that works. For about four hours alone in the corner. I think it worked. Yeah. The um, Yeah, fuck you. Aside from... <laughs> <laughs> Aside from Mickey D's insane amount of talent, oh, yeah, the, is... <laughs> the drum sound, the, act, the actual drum sound on this album absolutely blows me away and always has done. It's yep. always... I've just... 
just the sound of it, I just like that 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 kick was yeah. I don't know what it is. There's something they absolutely nailed it in the production, and and Mickey D's an insanely good drummer, and I've I've seen him live, and it's just like holy shit. So you should check him out, Aaron. You like drummers? He's got nice arms. Does he? Mm. Well, I might have to. Yeah. Um, but it, okay, about the storyline though, about the <laughs> how the um yeah. yeah. The couple have to recreate the crime mm. or the murder in oh, order ridiculous. to end that. Yeah. That uh, we probably shouldn't bring up um, any JW properties, but that's, I, I, I'm i going to say, inspired an episode of B U F F Y. Right. Um, where Buffy and Angel. Oh, B. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god buffy and angel uh th- the school's haunted by a ghost and mm. there's a student and the teacher and the student shoots the teacher in a jealous rage or an angry rage and buffy and angel end up recreating that it's on the sadie hawkins dance that episode uh, i, I know that one. can't remember what it's called it's fucking brilliant episode that the writing is amazing the acting is amazing everything about that episode is amazing so good well hang on I, i'm just really i'm really surprised aaron that you're a fan of buffy why Sorry. oh why? there's a... <laughs> <laughs> that would be sarcasm oh okay <laughs> Uh-huh. Well, I Sorry, talk I... about it every week um... <laughs> no as as you were as you were aaron continue sorry i'm it... derailing um yeah uh, doing a lot of thinking because it's a bit disappointing. Yeah, I know. So, oh, well, you know, you had Joss Whedon, we had Marilyn Manson, you know. Yeah, I also had J.K. Rowling. And somehow fucking Motley Crue got away with it all, so I don't know. God, I hope to God Pee Wee Herman is <laughs> clean. Oh, shit, it's a, no. Yeah, no. It's too late. <laughs> it's, it's it a was fun- a joke. Yeah. Clearly, it. it's no. <laughs> Kevin Feige, though. It's yeah. a funny thing, and I, I threw, and I can't remember which one it was, I threw quite a... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A theatrical, oh, Hunter Avatar, Hunter Gatherer. When I threw that one at you, Aaron, and I thought this is theatrical and it's all big and it's got all this, you know, you're just gonna love it. And it that doesn't was always the creepy clowns. Yeah, it doesn't always yeah. it doesn't always translate. And I remember twelve. But that was almost... also a familiar sound. Yeah, I'd heard that sound before. Yeah, in Saint Clown Posse, or was it Mister Bungle? No. Or oh, one of them? That's fucking clowns. I don't know. Not, not in Saint Clown. So that's why that that sound I I yeah. didn't. It doesn't. Um, it. it doesn't yeah. translate. And I, I was just thinking, and I got one of those stupid Facebook notifications. You know, um, one year ago today, and it was it was last week. And a year ago, I was at um, Alice Cooper concert with my youngest daughter because um, I told her it was um, it was theatrical ah. and and musical. And um, I thought this is this is where I'll get her, and she'll see Alice do his thing, and because she loves a musical theatre, and yeah, no. Nah. Nah, you manipulative. Yeah, no. That was. Um, I can't even say that I, word. No, I, I, um, I. That was a wasted plus one. I can tell. I can tell you that. You manipulative <sighs> bastard. I can't even fucking say it. Manipulative. No, that, so, it's not about that. It's I'm. I'm exposed. I was exposing no, her. You totally do. You fooled her. You well, played I, I her. Said, you know, it's 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 musical and it's theatre. So come along. Let her know that I will get her revenge for her in this podcast. And you're lucky that my review wasn't the exact same joke over and over oh, and over yeah. and over because I was going to. <laughs> There's a, it's, okay, so here's the thing: when you say it all sounds the same, and and I'm and I kind of get that because music, music you like, or every, every song sounds the same of any of music that you don't like. This is 1987, and 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 um, Andy pointed it out from this album has come. You know, they've just been influenced and copied and and there's riffs there and there's guitar sounds and and there's stuff that you know people have copied and and paid homage to ever since and so you have done better you hear it a lot and but when this came out they they wasn't hearing it there was a little bit but um no this was this was gr- absolutely groundbreaking back in back in 1987 so you know that's but that's okay i don't want you to like everything but i'm so glad you hated it so. But I I I didn't <laughs> didn't not like this album. Mm. I fucking hated it, man. <laughs> Shit. Fantastic. It was the same song Fantastic. over and over again. You, listeners at home, go listen to this. <laughs> I didn't even think I bothered to name what the album was called. It's King Abigail. Diamond, Abigail. That's right. See, that's how yeah. much I care. I've already forgotten her. Right, King Diamond, Abigail. At, at, at the first track, as I state, was a bit different because that had that stupid Doctor Who voice in it. But <laughs> songs, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, I think it is. They're exactly the same. You listen to that at home and then message me on Twitter and tell me I'm not crazy. <laughs> This is probably mm. the best thing that ever came out of Denmark as well. Yes. Uh, um, hello, Lego. <laughs> <laughs> nah, Lego's a close second. Uh. Well, after this fucking album, I'll be sending you some Lego to step on the two of you, I'll tell you. Shit. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't waste me Lego. There is a there is a part there is a part two to this album, and maybe I'll just keep that. Oh, there. great. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, jeez, I'm right. I'm fucking signing up for that one right now. <laughs> Yeah, I thought you said deliberately not like. I thought you had done that that you didn't like this album because it was so <laughs> repetitive, <laughs> and oh, just, it was like, just being total c words. Oh, to me. like I did with Five Finger Death Punch. I gave you something that's actually shit. Yeah, yeah. And then it, that, <laughs> but that backfired on you. <laughs> Yeah, it did. It did. It backfired so, on me. So, whereas anyway. no, nothing's backfired on me yet, I don't think. Yeah, you gave me 13, the musical. Oh, yeah, that that also backfired. Well, also that shit. that whole episode, let's just forget. <laughs> the, th- the cursed episode 13. Yeah, that'll treat that'll teach me. Anyway, we should we should wrap we should wrap up this section of the podcast and you've given it half a star and I'm giving it five stars, so um and Andy's probably giving it five stars, so 10 beats half. So, we win. We win. Fuck off. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what we should do? G'day listeners, Aaron here. While me and Gareth are taking a break, I thought now would be a great time to spill my guts. Well, not my guts. The fully fabulous Kristen Johnston's, whose hilarious yet harrowing memoir, Guts, details her roller coaster ride through all the excesses of Hollywood and the toll it can take on even the fiercest of bitches. Keijo has shed all pretense by opening up her heart and soul in this gripping tale which will leave readers reaffirmed of their own inner strength and ability to kick some ass in this world. You may know her as Sally Solomon or as Joan Collins's bedrockian daughter, but once you've dived into Kristen's guts, you'll come to know that she's nothing short of a warrior. Available now where all good books are sold, grab your copy of Guts today. It sounds good. I want to ask you a couple of questions, if I could, Andy, because I listen to your podcast a lot. Sounds and, good. And I, and I do ask questions at it and realize that I'm an insane man because you can't actually hear me, um, which explains why you don't answer me ever. <laughs> So, but that, but now you Sorry. can. So, <laughs> what? Yeah, you're in. You are. <laughs> you obviously you play bass. One of your hats. One of your many many hats. You play bass in the metal band Lord. Can you remember what it's like to play live? <laughs> Not really. No, it's, <laughs> it's been, been a while. It it's been a while. I think uh, the last show we played was here in Sydney, and that was July 2019. Wow. And we were we were actually. Um, we started getting offered shows last year um, mm. and some stuff overseas. And it was, you know, we didn't, luckily we didn't book anything in, um, mm. but we had plans to sort of go around the country, go overseas. And then obviously like we've all experienced the whole world imploded and locked down. And so we've, yeah, we, we've yeah. Uh, been occupying ourselves with other things. Luckily I've, I've got this podcast that I've been doing for, for the past several years. So mm-hmm. that sort of just kept me, <clears throat> kept me amused and, yep. and kept the thing, kept everything going, especially Although it's not creative like music, it's still kind of creative because you you have to stimulate a conversation with somebody mm. and try and dig out something interesting and find stories and all that sort of stuff. So, yep. yeah, I, I didn't go too insane, but um, yeah, it's it's been a long time. I, I'm 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 missing that feeling, whatever yeah. whatever that feeling was. What it was, yeah. And you, you say did... that you didn't go too insane, but you weren't the one listening to your podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there we go. But um, tish. But you did. <laughs> you you did manage to get an EP out yep. of such so and a, and a, and an, and another T-shirt because you do love a bit of merch. Oh, uh, I am so in in the band. I am the uh, I'm the merch guy. I'm the marketing guy. Yeah. I'm uh, I'm I'm the designated sales salesman. I and then when we we tour, I'm the tour manager, the the <laughs> band manager, all this sort of stuff. So. Yeah. And it's it's a typical bass player role because you know we're only playing bass. So I mean, who really gives, exactly. gives a crap about bass guitar? So we've got, we've got to find some purpose elsewhere. So we we always try to overcompensate with other areas in life. But um, yeah, we we did the EP um, just to keep 
just to keep it moving and, and put something out there mm. and, and yeah, a little bit of merch here and there. And we've been working on another release that we, um, we're going to announce uh, in a couple of weeks, the beginning okay. of March. And mm. um, I think Aaron in particular, I don't know when, actually, when, when, we, when are we putting this episode out? Uh, roughly two and a half weeks. Okay. Roughly. So what's that work out to be? We can go exclusive. Oh, yeah, easy. We can go exclusive right now. Let's do it. Oh, let's go. Let's go exclusive. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we've got a we've got a covers album that we're releasing, Ooh. and oh. so we've we've been putting we've been releasing cover songs for for well since day dot, mm. and uh, so we've amassed a whole bunch of cover songs that have appeared on bonus tracks on different versions of the albums, Japanese releases, European releases. And so people have struggled to try and find them all. And so we thought, let's put them all together on a kind of like a compilation. Okay. But then add a few new covers on there as well. Yep. So the album's going to be called Undercovers Volume 1 because we know that we're not going to stop doing covers. It's just, <laughs> we can't help ourselves. Yeah. And uh, we've got some really cool artwork. It's uh, basically uh, the three of us in the band um, underneath uh, some, uh, like a Duna cover. Um, with this scary demon guy behind us, it's very goosebumps esque, mm. and um, and so we're putting that out. And then the first single comes out on the fifth of March, and that is, okay. um, see if you like this one, Aaron. It's uh, "To the Moon and Back" by Savage Garden. So <sighs> we're no, gonna... sorry. Remember, I had Spice Girls and Madonna on my wall. <laughs> not, I did not have boy pop artists. You on didn't my have Darren wall. and Daniel. No, oh, oh, that would have been a dead giveaway that Darren. I liked. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, I, I had the Spice Girls. Well, well, we Sorry. picked that song. But and yeah, okay, yep. Yeah, so we I got do that. know it, though. Yeah, and so we, we got that as the first single. And funnily enough, that was a song that I actually am a massive fan of that self-titled album when it came out. I had it on cassette, and I was just uh, playing the hell out of that. And so I always said to the guys that that would be a great power metal song. Yep. Um, and uh, Tim sort of went away in the... the the cogs were turning and he thought, mm. okay, let's give it a go. And so we, we went in there and, uh, and put it and put it together and yeah, it, it sounds pretty good. So I'll be interested to hear what, um, yeah. what Darren, cause Darren's on Twitter and he's a bit active on there. So I'm going to, I'm going to pester him and throw him a bunch of Spotify links and go tell me and share it and give it a bit of love. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, so we're looking forward to doing that and I think that will keep things moving, uh, the, the first half of this year and then we'll hopefully, uh, start getting into the guts of a, of another album, a proper album, yep. um, towards the end of the year. But, um, nice. yeah, so we're, we're, we're always, we're always trying to keep, keep things moving. And although we can't get out and do stuff, we'll, you know, we've got technology so we can, we can keep talking to each other and, and recording and doing stuff. Destroy other people's music instead. That's, that's exactly right. Yeah. It completely yeah. <laughs> <It> <laughs> is, um, <laughs> it is, it's too late now, but borders are open at WA. You're in Sydney. You can come here. You can play a gig. There's one happening tomorrow night. Perth rocks. If you just rock up, I'm pretty sure we can get Lord. Oh, we can bump it. Well, time, time to get time to get on a plane. But you know, yeah. first of all, I'd have to I have to stop by Aaron's place and uh, do a backyard <laughs> show for him first because I think he would be uh, really excited to <laughs> to have a have a heavy metal band play. play I've had a punk them. band play in my backyard. An oh, old that's... chick female punk band nice. called the Homewreckers from Melbourne <laughs> twenty <laughs> years cool. ago. Three three beautiful chiggy babes. Mm. Um, but I I am actually excited about your covers album. I cannot wait to do a review. It's got Gonna start oh, off geez. when I first yeah, heard the covers. <laughs> if Aaron, if you jump on, if you jump on YouTube and search for Lord like on a light like this, I've not already a, seen it. Oh, you've seen it. It's a it's a great yeah, I video. I turned the volume down. I, I wasn't oh, allowed to listen to it, but on. I was allowed to watch the video. The video. No, I, I have to be. I have to be given them any heavy metal music I listen to, I have to be given it on this show. Mm. And you guys chickened out of that this round. So I thought, no, I'm yeah. serves them right. I'm going to put every song on mute. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, wow. thanks for, thanks for giving us another play on YouTube. So that's, that's good. That's, <laughs> I, I did my Cause, part, didn't I? Cause that <laughs> song, that part. song needs it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just anything, but yeah, no, it's, it's worth, it's worth it. It's, yeah, to know any music, uh, metal musicians out there that keep DMing me, asking me to listen to your albums, I'm sorry, I cannot. This is a game. I have to wait till <laughs> it's gotta, given. Yeah, D DM that guy over there. You have to hit up Gareth yeah, and like schmooze it. him, make him think you're a legitimate musician, and then he will give it to me. See how this works, kiddies? <laughs> 
I sound like such I a get, prick. I get so many. I get. I get so many emails and messages from bands going, "Hey, do you want to?" Do-? Yeah, from Wall of Sound. Wall of Sound. That's what I call the other woman. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Just wedge, <laughs> wedge that one in. Coming back to going back to Andy. Yes, sorry, it's um, not about me. Yeah, no. And I was think I was thinking we were talking the other day, Aaron and I, about superstitions, and he corrected me that I'm not superstitious. I'm just ADHD. Shit, it's just anal I'm, irritant, I'm just ADHD uh, about no, OCD. I so, OCD. Sorry, some some little things that I do, and I thought, um, and I know a lot of musos do, but do you have any pre-show kind of rituals that you you need to do? Um, just to go right. If I don't, you know, plug my bass in, I can't go on stage or something like that. Has you got any any uh, weird I, little superstitions? Yeah, I think it's the it's the typical need to go for a piss before yep. I play, and usually two or three droplets drop out. <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing. There's nothing there. It's just pure nerves. Yeah, trying to scrub the well. mental image. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God this is not a video podcast. <laughs> yeah, it is a demonstration. But it's like it's but I have the same thing before I do a podcast as well. It's just sort of that um it's just it's a it's a body clock sort of thing where it's sort of, it becomes a pattern and you go oh, I need that to happen before uh before I get into it. So yeah, going to the toilet beforehand is one thing. I think um also I mean this is this is going to sound absolutely shocking but uh you know, I I usually go and grab a beer. I mean, I've already I'm usually several beers in by the time I get on stage anyway, but yeah. um how dare you're I a rock think. star who drinks yeah. oh, my oh my god, god. i haven't heard that before <laughs> <laughs> that's but brand so, new but i usually have to go and grab a beer at least to go and have on side of stage something like that that i can have a have a sip or a swig uh, during the set which is yep. probably not the ideal drink to be uh having while mm. performing because uh Kind of dries you out. Yeah, dries you out. Gives, oh, you, it, gives you gas. Yeah, dry, dries you out. And yes, uh, Aaron, I, I've uh, I've kicked it over before. I've had somebody in the crowd lean over and grab it themselves and take <laughs> the swig and handy. put it back down. And I've looked, I've looked at that beer and thought, how how desperate do I actually want that beer now? <laughs> and well, it just depends. Just depends on how many beers I've had leading up to it. Yeah. <laughs> I never, I never incite violence at shows. I'm, I'm, I'm diplomatic on stage as well. So, uh, it's, <laughs> yeah, we're, we're yeah, all, wait, we're wait all till friends. the show's finished and everyone's on their way <laughs> out. Right. Yeah. Right. The, um, the, the, the beer certainly explains that photo of you on your back playing guitar and someone in the crowd's plaiting your hair. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So there's, um, there's a couple of times during. I mean, I don't do it every show, but uh, usually I'll, I'll lie down on stage with my back on the fold backs and I'll do it in front of Mark, our other guitarist, just to put him off. And it's usually when he's playing, he's in the middle of a solo. And yeah. so he's concentrating and I know that he absolutely hates it. He can't move. He's just, he's, and it's very intricate and he's doing a lot of stuff on the fretboard. Yeah. So I just think, how can I get in his line of vision? Cause he's always looking down mm. and he's trying to just concentrate on what he's doing. So I, I lie down right in front of him. I put my back up against the fold back and I just look at him as I'm playing and uh, and I've certainly put him off many many a time, but the the thing that <laughs> usually makes that uh, really difficult is that I've usually got a wireless thing on my back on my uh, my guitar strap, mm. and there's always interference or something going on, and yeah. so it's just it's it's a nightmare. So Tim absolutely hates it in our band because he just can hear all these frequencies going off on stage. It sounds yep. like shit, but for the theatrics of, theatrics <laughs> ah. of it, yep. people love it. Yep. I can I can understand Tim losing his shit over that one a little bit because he's a bit of a mad producer <laughs> and he's a real he's a mad scientist. He's a mad scientist. Yeah. Um, who's the biggest band that you've toured with or played with? Because you've done a few big ones. Uh, biggest band. Um, yeah. Look, um, obviously in the metal genre, there's been a, a a bunch of big metal bands that we played with. Um, and bands that I grew up with, like really idolizing. So mm. I've for myself, bucket list <laughs> bands. I've I've uh, ticked a few off the list and I know Aaron's going to sort of just look off at the wall and stare with this glaze in his eyes, just not understanding what's going on. Going so what to, to or say? already is. <laughs> already <laughs> is. Yeah, 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 that's right. So, um, we look, we play with uh, Queensryche and oh. uh, Saxon and Halloween. And they they did oh, Silent yeah. Lucidity. Hey. Yeah. Oh my God. Aaron, jeez. Oh, well, there you go. Well, well, that, that's amazing. Well, there you go. So we play with that band. So there you go. That band. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm we, quite. Oh. I'm quietly losing my shit over Saxon. Um, Saxon was Saxon was uh, like that was probably my band. Yeah. Um, so all of us in the band have had like our our favorite bands um, yep. that we played with. But um, for me, that was 
a band that I used to go to, like, you know, the record exchange in Brisbane mm-hmm. when I was growing up and buy the Saxon vinyls yep. and just love the album covers, but not know what the songs were and mm-hmm. go home and, and discover the music. And so fast forward however many years later and, and, you know, I'm sharing the stage with them and playing these shows and talking to them and listening to them tell me all their stories over the years and yeah. just incredible stuff. It's just a, a real pinch yourself moment. Yep. Um, yep. Yeah. So, and look, we played with Megadeth in Indonesia. That was cool. And, and, yep. you know, the old yeah. band. Now, that, now I'm impressed. I mean, okay, I'm, I'm waiting right. for you to say the Spice Girls, but no, Megadeth, that's, that's pretty good. <laughs> well, pretty, pretty close to the Spice Girls. So it's not far removed. And, and, um, and then when, uh, cause the band had a name change, uh, back in 2005. So we used to be called Dungeon, which mm. is a heavy metal name and Dungeon played uh, a bunch of shows with Megadeth in Europe. And that was, um, I wasn't in the band then, but I was, mm. um, I was a bit of a beer roadie, so I was carrying the beers, and and I was also on the lighting desk. You're a tag along. I was a tag along. That's right. I was riding on the coattails of the rest of the guys. So I got to I got to do the Megadeth tour through Europe, and and that was a that was a lot of fun and a lot of good stories from that. Yeah. But um, we did get to play with them again uh, in 2017 in yes. Indonesia. So okay. That was good. Yep. That would have been yeah. They're great. I love I love Megadeth. I you you did mention that. I'm glad you brought it up about the dungeon as 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 known as the dungeon era of Lord. Mm. Yours and we're talking about fairy tales and things like that. Yours is a little bit of a Cinderella story because you're a fan. You're a fan of the band, and then you end up yep. playing in the band. Yeah, yeah. So, I um. So how did that happen? Or you just you just hung around so long that Tim went, oh, just <laughs> fucking pick. Just <laughs> someone give him an instrument. Not too many strings. Just let him play. Just let him stand in the corner with the triangle just to shut him up. Well, so I was, li- I was living in Brisbane, so I grew up in, in Queensland. And uh, so I discovered Dungeon just like a bunch of other metal bands, just through friends. And so Dungeon came up to Brisbane and played a show and went and saw them. And I met Tim and the guys and um, and sort of just kept in contact a little bit from there. But it was just as a, as a fan of, of what, they were, what they were doing. And so they kept coming up for different shows. And... I think I'm pretty sure Tim said this uh, a few times in the past, but I think they were a little bit wary of me to begin with because every time they saw me at a show, I was absolutely fucking wasted. I was so <laughs> drunk and just talking their ears off and just probably just spitting in their faces, and I was just I was just a mess. So they were sort of going, "Oh, who's this Andy sort of guy? He's a bit of a he's a bit of a bit of a mess and, and a bit of a party animal." And, uh, and so sort of not long after that, a few years after that, they were getting ready to go to Europe. And so I guess long story short, I just, I was planning to go to Europe anyway that year to go and uh, see some festivals. And so I just said, Hey guys, like I'm going anyway, so I'm paying my own way, but, um, can I tag along with you guys and I can, I can help, like I can carry some guitars and some gear and stuff like that. And so they need the lighting guy, um, to, to man the desk. And mm. so I, I'd learned how to press some buttons in time with the music, which was pretty, you know, very complicated stuff. And, uh, and so I went over and really it was a case of being in Europe with, and we were in Europe and Japan over about an eight week period. And, uh, there was a few times there where I was picking up the bass player's guitar at the time and just noodling around on the bass. And Tim sort of looked over and goes, Oh, you can play. And I go, Oh, not really. I mean, kind of just dabbling around, whatever. And so he just, oh, stop. You're, you're, you're being too kind. <laughs> yep. Come off it. You yeah. knew you could play. <laughs> modesty. I was just, hey, I was just a bedroom guitarist. What do I know? Yeah, so yeah. I was, I was just oh, little, you know, I dabble, a I little dabble bit. a little bit. <laughs> but he, he made a mental note, and yeah. uh, it wasn't until the end of the trip where things started to get a little bit tense within the band. And uh, there was a couple of comments, just very sort of throwaway comments, saying, "Oh, Andy, if anything ever happens, would you join the band?" Mm. And I just said, "Oh, maybe." I said, "I guess <laughs> I'd have to move to Sydney, wouldn't I?" And they yeah. said, "Oh, well, probably." Yeah. And so um, a few months later, the band broke up or, or most of the members left, or half the band left. And uh, Tim decided, well, I'm going to change the name of the band. I need to start a new chapter and, and uh, start afresh. And so he hit me up and said, are you still interested in this idea? And so I said, yeah, okay. So I packed my bags and moved to Sydney. And that was that was 16 years ago. Mm. So, um, and I, no, I never left. I thought I was only going to last a few months. I said <laughs> goodbye to everyone. I said, I'll be back soon, I think. And um, yeah, and never never came back so uh, so there back. you go so yeah it was a little bit a little bit cinderella it was um yeah. it was it was a bit of a pinch yourself moment especially times over the years where i found myself you know on stage in the middle of a show and you know i'm in japan or mm. in europe or in the states and just having this moment going 
oh, that's right. I was this <laughs> loser kid in my bedroom playing guitar in front of the mirror where my mum would open the door and oh, catch me, like, so pretend to be James Hetfield or whatever. So embarrassing. From Metallica yeah. and just going, oh, nothing, nothing. I'm not doing anything in here. <laughs> And, and Aaron, that was all I was doing in my bedroom that my mum caught me doing, <laughs> by the way, just before you interject. And, uh, and just having uh, those my moments. My mind was elsewhere. I wasn't oh, it, paying attention at all. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I've, I've ha- certainly had those pinch yourself moments where I've realized uh, how far I've come over the years. So it's, yep. it's, been, it's been good and it's a, nice, it's a nice little story. Yeah. No, it is. I didn't know that actually. So It that. sounds very almost famous-y. Like a young mm, kid yeah. who goes touring with the band and yep. ends up getting laid and all that. Yep. Um, but he doesn't end up joining the band, does he? So it's not really almost, almost famous. famous. Yeah, it's a well, much you become part of you become part of the cool cool kids club. And and to be honest, I, I the the getting laid part didn't happen until probably a few months later after that. And uh, and really, it did come down to a bit of the reputation of the band anyway. So I guess it sort of all worked out and very probably closer to almost famous than than we did. Yeah. 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 Cool. Yeah, and unless you're a you know a lead singer and a lead guitarist, you know they're they're the ones getting laid all the time because they're just fucking show offs. So, you know. I don't know, man. I've seen some of these roadies. <laughs> you're they're only doing it because they they got the backstage pass. You want to get backstage? Yeah. No, that's cool. Um, <laughs> Aaron, did you did you have any um little pearls for for our guest? Um, yeah. No, I'm always interested in um. Mm. Or it's obviously the the dumbass question. Like, what bands influence you? What metal <laughs> bands do you listen to? I've heard these fucking questions a thousand times, journalists. Stop it! But what <laughs> what non musical? Oh, I'm in, taking um, I'm taking that in, as an insult. But anyway, <laughs> good. Yeah, take it personally and I work have. with it and change. Do you know? How hard it is to come up with, <laughs> seriously, to come up with new questions every week. It is insane. Yes, I know what it's like. Yeah. Goodness me. I have to come up with a new review and a new gimmick in my review. And, and all. Anyways, um, no, I, I, I'm always interested, though, in what the non-musical influences of a musician is. So what sort of things out, just in general, that inspires your writing or your composing? I don't know. What exactly do you do? <laughs> 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 you don't have a Wikipedia page. Oh. I know. Someone's. I, I got really disappointed about that. I'm like, and I didn't want to be the person that makes it myself. You can't do that. Someone's yeah. got to make it for you. Yeah. So, uh, so maybe, maybe Aaron, we need to make one for each other. So oh. uh, you, you, you give me all the content. I'll give you all my content and we'll just, uh, yeah, we'll make it happen. Um, but, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Things that inspire the music are, you know, long walks on the beach, uh, on the beach at night, you know. So, uh, no, 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 I'm life. asking for inspirations, not Inspiration. your dating profile. <laughs> <laughs> um, look, I don't know. I mean, I think, I think for me, I mean, it's really bland stuff. I mean, I'm, I'm such a, uh, yeah. I'm such a tech, <laughs> hang on, hang on, let me No, think. no, no, I completely <laughs> agree with you. The mundane in life is the most expi- inspiring to an artist. Well, it is. It's the absurd of, of life, the, the, the absurd and the mundane. And for me, like, I'm always a little bit of a tech head when it comes to, um, when it comes to the trial and error of just being in a band and sort of working out how to connect with people. And I'm big on sort of, you know, as, as you've both seen with my podcast, like I am listening to me tonight talking I love to talk and Mm. I love to communicate and I love to understand more about people around me. So for me over the years, it's been about sort of just digesting other people's stories and and understanding where people made mistakes and learning from them and trying to be a better person. And it all sounds very wanky and, and, and cheesy. Yeah, Yeah. that's fine. (laughs) But, um, but yeah, I think that (laughs) just cut me. It is, but it's, it's what motivations of people. It's, it's, their story and why they act how they do today based on where they have come from yesterday. No, I, I complete as a writer, you know, pen to paper, not music. I, I completely the same. You know, you, it- you look at people and when you see someone running on the street, are you looking at where they're running to or who they're running from? Well, I look at how they're running. I do. I say, no, I, I feel in 10 yeah, different places okay, myself. This- that's a terrible action. Let me, let me fix that for you. Yeah. Yeah. Poor form. Poor form. Yeah. Uh, but I, like I love I love people watching and I love I love trying to interpret body language and why people do what they do and you know just even like you know the world over the past couple of years like just seeing you know globally and politically and just watching how your day to day person who doesn't know a lot about anything responds to what is being pushed in our face and it's just it's just a very interesting. Uh, 
experiment, social experiment that just continuously happens, you know, over the, over the generations where you just watch people um, just exposing parts of their personality in a very subconscious way where they've got, they're completely oblivious to what they're doing. But um, anyone who spends the time to stop and pause and just watch, it's just, it's very, it's very interesting. And for me, I just, I've, I've always been a very self-conscious person. Um, and, you know, as a kid, I really had a lot of self-esteem issues. So for me, just out of a survival mechanism, I was always quite and observing the room and, and watching how other people act. So I wasn't the one that embarrassed myself. And at the time, it's not very, it's not a very good thing to, to be thinking about as a kid, but over time, it's actually helped me because I'm always thinking first before jumping into something and sort of making, or hopefully making uh, the best possible decision I can. So yeah, I mean, whether that inspires me musically, I, I don't know, but I guess I'm, I'm always sort of being attentive to what other musicians are doing and what, why my idols wrote what they wrote and, uh, you know, whether it be lyrically or musically and seeing how, you know, even you know, going back to King Diamond, I mean, I know that you'd love this, you know, to, to throw it back to King Diamond, Aaron, but, you know, just to see their influence in the metal world, um, it's it's interesting to see that lineage over time where other bands have, have gradually picked up different uh, techniques and, and styles that have come from an album that, uh, you know, anything outside of that niche metal circle would be absolutely hated. So it's uh, it's fascinating. Yeah. Well, you say King Diamond, I say Trample Me Elmo. <laughs> <laughs> the last joke. That's the last that one. Album. Wow. Have you That's been saving the last that one? I wrote. Yes, oh, so I've been okay, dying cool. to get it in there. I have to wait till the fucking <laughs> album got brought up again. Um, yeah, no, look, I, I, uh, oh, yeah, no, you, you're always worried about being embarrassed, and then you end up on this podcast. Mm, <laughs> here we go. Well, I don't, I don't worry as much about being embarrassed these days. So, luckily, luckily, I've, I've, I've shed that part of my personality, but I've, I've kept the good parts and I've got rid of the bad parts. Well, most of the bad parts, mostly. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, what, what music would your listeners or your fans be surprised to know that you listen to? Ooh. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, what skeletons well, if... are in your closet? <laughs> <laughs> no, no skeletons. I'm, I'm, I've always been pretty, um, pretty open with, uh, my, my eclectic tastes in music, but, um, I think the first band I, that always comes to mind is, uh, Fall Out Boy, which is a, a real pop punk Jeez. band. I, I really, really enjoy that band. And I think a lot of people initially without knowing the band will cringe when they, when they, oh, uh, I know them and I cringe. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, a very intelligent songwriting, um, very witty uh, lyrics, and I've just really appreciated sort of the way that they've structured a the song. Um, very superficial on on the surface, but uh, when you dig a little bit deeper, um, they're very clever guys and uh, well well seasoned seasoned musicians, which I always appreciate. But um, I think, I mean. I'm just trying to think. I'm, I'm looking across at my music collection to see what else pops out. I mean, I love a lot of 80s pop, um, you know, Heart and Roxette and, but, uh, you know, and, uh, and Tim in our band's a massive 80s synth, synth pop fan. So he, he's got me onto, onto Duran Duran and, uh, and uh, Pseudo Echo and, and stuff like that as well. So some of that sort of more synthy stuff, which I've really started to appreciate over the years. So yeah, there's, there's a bunch of stuff there. Um, a little bit of blues and jazz, a little bit of Miles Davis at times. So that, really there's an answer that that'll surprise people at home. Miles Davis. Yeah. Okay. Oh, there you go. Just to clarify, that is the jazz musician and not the RuPaul's Drag Race pit crew member. <laughs> There's only one person in this room on this podcast that sashay away knows what you're talking about. The, the gays at home will get that. <laughs> one of them, one of them plays music. The other one, yeah, wears his jocks on TV. So, anyways, right. okay. <laughs> I think Andy got it. I don't uh, think you got it, Gareth. I didn't. I have never watched homophobe. one. One, yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm a homophobe for not watching RuPaul. I've watched a, I've watched a lot of RuPaul. Really? RuPaul, so, uh, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, d- very entertaining. Yeah, he is. It's, it's a very funny show, I and they're, they're, those contestants are fucking talented as. Yeah. So, right. and every week they're throwing something. New. Anyways, it's not about RuPaul. It's not about RuPaul. <laughs> but it always ends up at RuPaul for some but reason. Miles Davis. That yeah. There we go. Uh, that's Miles an answer. Davis. Like that's 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 something good. There I, we go. I, we got yeah. there. We got there. We go. Picture you sitting on the the balcony at night listening to um, Serenity in Blue. Is it? I don't know. I I pulled that name out of my ass. That'll do. That'll do. Just, I, it's just a bunch of trumpet, really. Yeah. Here's a funny story about Glenn Miller. Well, I'll be the judge of that. Yeah. Oh, it's, <laughs> it's not. It's not funny, aha. It's just like what? 
Reezy and I were looking through secondhand vinyl because everywhere we go, we like to search out secondhand vinyl and sometimes you just find the most amazing stuff. And she, we pulled up this Roger Miller album, um, Roger Miller's Greatest Hits. And she goes, Roger Miller, my dad used to love him. He's great. It's that big band sound and, you know, all this sort of thing. And I'm like, okay, cool. Let's buy it. It was like 10 bucks or something. So we bought it. We got it home. Okay. Her dad listened to Glenn Miller. Yeah. I was waiting for that. Roger Miller is not the same as Glenn Miller. We have got the hokiest country album on the planet. It is fantastic. And you know what? I put, I, I just drop the needle on it from time to time just for a giggle. So yeah, um, it, was, it was this amazing because then we get on the Google going, this is not what I remember. You know, where's the, where's the trombone? And um, no, there's a little bit of little bit of happy country music there. So yeah, but there you go. Discover new things or new old things. There you go. I'll have to look out for his albums for you now. Yeah, I, mean, I'll go, I'll stop <laughs> I've, I actually now when I'm looking, I'm looking for musicals that I've done because there's people out there that just love it, and there's there's actually money in it. So which is funny because I I picked up a I picked up a Saxon Crusader first pressing for something like twenty dollars and I didn't even haggle on the price because I would have paid two hundred for it. So mm. it's it's that it's that weird thing when you go oh, it's it's weird I think it's weird for me because I I know what I like and I, I just sort of I pick up these things and I look at the guy going, You have no idea what this is worth. <laughs> but I think that it's only worth that to me. Um and I like, the dude you yeah. And I said to him after I paid for it, you could have put two hundred on that and I would have um the nard and gone to the cash machine. So yeah. Would you? Mm. Shit, man. Yeah, yeah. Stuff, especially original stuff. The new, you know, new releases. I don't, I don't care about so much. Yeah, but, I guess um, original yeah, stuff. I guess. Yeah. Love it. There's a lot of gems out there. Even the, even the old Australian rock stuff. Um, you know, ACDC and the Angels and all mm. that. You know, those first pressings, and and it gets really nerdy as well because when when they start to repress the the um the labels change color mm. there'll be a different matrix on them and these guys who are absolutely passionate about uh collecting every variant of every release i mean some of this stuff just goes for just crazy money it's, yep. it's absolutely insane so i mean it's very rare that you'll find an acdc record in an op shop these days but yep. um yeah i tell you what uh, any of that stuff that's lying around i know people that have got you know parents that have just uh, got these dusty record collections and they just they're ready to throw it out and it's like don't, don't. oh my god go and insure it yeah yeah <laughs> Or, or call me first. I'll give you three hundred for the lot. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. I'll take them off your hands. I'll go to a good home. Yep. Yeah. Don't don't do that. Yeah. That's no, very cool. Interesting. Anyway, I've no idea what any of you guys are that talking about. That is fantastic. Right? Yeah. All right. This is probably a good point to start to wind up the show and think about maybe swapping some albums for next week. Yes. Do we have a guest next week? I have no idea. I don't know. We were meant to. But... No, I have an album, if you have an album. Yeah, I do. I'm going to give you a tropical little fairy tale called... Christ. Excuse me? Once on this island. Ooh. Well, that sounds... Ooh. Now you're ooh, aren't ooh, you? Once on this island. Ooh. Okay. I, I'm writing that down. Is, Once this, a, is this a Broadway on... show? Yes. Okay. By Lynn is Ahrens it... and Stephen... Flaherty, or however you pronounce his last name, Flaherty. That's how it's written, so that's how I'm going to say Fla- it. <laughs> Flaherty. Uh, Once yeah. on this island, it's called. So we'll go with the the recent Broadway one. Yep. Just because it's a, a bit fresher, a bit more crisper, and if it does tour to Australia, that's the production that will tour, awesome. most likely. Um, it's sort of like The Little Mermaid, kind of. Oh, oh Jesus, that's exciting. I'm... But um. Uh, it's. I think it's more so about classism. Don't I don't tell me, know. I've don't never tell me. seen this. Oh, okay. I've never seen it, and I, I've. I... Don't tell me. <clears throat> okay. Fun. All right. Fun. Yes. That sounds yeah, like fun. Like once on this island. Okay. And what shit are you going to throw at me this week? I had literally changed my mind as you were talking because I I wasn't listening. So I literally changed my mind. I have. I had one up my sleeve, and I thought it's probably a bit much to back up King Diamond with. With this next band, so I have I have changed it slightly, but this one popped into my head because this is pretty much based on what we've been talking about. And I'm going to give you an absolute classic that I think came out the same year as Abigail. Oh boy! 
so it won't sound anything like it and and you need to do google image searches on all of this and bathe in in the glory of man of war fighting the world <laughs> <laughs> oh yes oh. This is the job straps oh can't wait to tune in <laughs> this this album and i think i wrote this on facebook after i met ross the boss um this album literally changed my life i just went i'd never heard anything like this before really you sound so, like me yeah this this, this musical changed my life it was i love this musical it changed my life this is another well, I one i saw it and it changed my life it did i this is <laughs> no, another I, one i'm I, making fun of me i'm not making i know fun of you. i bought this okay. i bought the cassette because i was a cassette guy but this is before yeah. cds i think i couldn't afford them i bought the cassette based on the album cover because it was in the metal section and i thought that's the most fucking metal thing i have ever seen without a hint of irony or homoeroticism at all that was just like that is that is more metal than judas priest so yeah that's what i a man sorry um a man of war a thing well it's a jellyfish jellyfish that's yeah. what i'm thinking but they're not named after jellyfish pretty sure oh, oh okay right. bugger i'll ask joey and, and the good thing aaron is that this only goes for just over half an hour <laughs> yeah as well. yeah oh, i forgot about that God damn it <laughs> damn it <laughs> I, I should have gone one of the longer albums <laughs> Once on the island is twice as long. Uh, so. uh, that means, hey, Gareth, you should give him two albums then. Yeah, have no, ha uh, no, yeah. No, hail to England. No, Back it up no, with hail to England. No, no. <laughs> does not work like that. It is luck of the draw. It is, no. And you're going to play that game, I will give you the three and a half hour you musicals. Get you get it. You get it. I don't have time for that. You get, you get it short and sharp. <laughs> You'll make time. So jellyfish. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I, I, I should be able to connect with that because my co-host is spineless. No. Oh. Oh, no. <laughs> so good. I'm going to send you the Sorry. Very Sorry. quick. I'm going to send you, the, send you the link. You on know I don't mean Spotify. it. I know that. Was, that was at the top of my brain and it came out of my mouth before I could even stop it. It is funny how that happens so many times. It just can't I know, stop right? it. That's how I keep getting dudes pregnant. Yeah. And... <laughs> God. There's a mental image. There is a mental image. All right. I am. Yes. All right. You've got you've got yours. I've got mine. Um. Thank you so much, Andy. It's been an absolute blast. It's great. I remember you sent me a a message or something. Um. Probably about twelve months ago, and said you should start a podcast so I can come on it. So here it is. And there you are. <laughs> you can thank me for that because he wouldn't have gotten off his off it his ass and done it without no, me. Without you, wouldn't have done it. So thank you so much for being on here. Um, Andy, please, can, can you tell people where to find your podcast, where to find you in socials, all that sort of thing? Where can people check you out? Uh, I've got a really wanky website, which is just andydowling.net, and oh. everything's there. All right. So um, the Band Lord, Andy Social Podcast, and uh, and just everything else, all my social media handles, it's just uh, all in one neat little place. Fantastic. Your branding. That branding, is. that's it. So and, that's and it um, you know. Get in quick on Andy's eBay store because that's closing. And don't forget his Discogs. <laughs> there you go. I thought I'd plug it for you. <laughs> Thanks, mate. <laughs> and support Always him hustling. on Patreon. As and and he's got a Patreon. Oh, yes. Hey, thank you. And thank you very much, Aaron, for uh, getting behind uh, my Patreon. I've, I've hey. put that on record. A very generous uh, person to, to 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 throw me a dollar. Like That's it's, all right. Uh, I it's only lovely. did it. I only did it so you would say thank you on air and make me look good to everyone. <laughs> and it worked. So I fell for that one. Well, thanks for the prompt because otherwise no. it would have been horrible. Would have been... Oh. No, no, no. I, 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 any guests that come on here, I'll support them for a short amount of time and then I can't afford it anymore because suddenly there's fucking 50 of you and I've got to be paying out a dollar to each of you every month. Oh, so, God. Well, lot. I appreciate the support while it's there. I do not mind. I'm, I'm there to su support the artists and um, for them to buy my book in return. Go buy Aaron's book. The Tonneson no. Tales. Buy the book. <laughs> Cut it out of this episode. It's not no. about my book. <laughs> It'll be about everything. Buy the book. I got, I got nothing. I got nothing to show. So wrap things up. Thank you once again, yes. Andy. You Thank you very heard, much, Andy. You've, you've heard his Thanks socials. Thanks for having us. It's, Thanks for having me. It's been a blast. Right. Anytime you want to come back, open invitation. Um, thanks to. I've never seen Gareth this nervous. 
I'm not nervous. I'm actually just trying. <laughs> Message to me every ten minutes. Oh my god! What if Andy doesn't like Do me? You know, what if I say something wrong? Me. What if I stuff up? What if I sound like an idiot? What you, if he hates me? You. Um, <laughs> I've never heard so much shit in, in my life. Aaron, fuck's sake. <sighs> <laughs> oh, well, thanks for thanks for having me, guys. And um, I would love to. I'd love to come back, and I'd love to uh, run the Gortland again with another musical. So um, I'll, I'll stay tuned. Definitely. Yes, we'll have you back. Sounds All right, good. it's not over yet. Fantastic. <laughs> After that fucking shit you guys gave me this week, this is not over. So good. I'll yeah. take that. All right, Gareth, okay. he's going to go. He's going to wheeze pants. Yes, I've so got right. a wee. Uh, everyone. Thanks, everyone. See you later. See you later. Bye. Look, right, 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 right. Like Quicksand! Prof, we've got to send them down the hill so we can kill them all.